Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to another Real Madrid review. Real Madrid 4, Osasuna nil. Absolutely trashed Osasuna at home. Again, like Giro, now this is not a result that I think many Real Madrid fans expected. I'm pretty sure Real Madrid winning isn't that surprising, but winning by four goals and keeping a clean sheet is very 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 surprising and of course it is arguably one of our better performances of the season along with Girona um, I would say that you know we've started playing slightly better um, in the last couple of weeks which shows you know in the results because if you are scoring more goals and you're winning by more goals and you're creating more chances and overall the team is just playing at a better rate it clearly shows that there has been an improvement and it does seem like there has been a big improvement from the first few weeks of the season of course I mean some stand-up performances I mean do we have to talk about Jude Bellingham anymore? I mean, we come on here, we talk about Jude Bellingham every single week. Either it's an absolute golazo, either it's a 10 out of 10, either it's, you know, another goal. He's got two today, and he feels like he's the striker of this team. He genuinely does. I mean, isn't it now 10 goals for him? I mean, that's just insane that's just insane i mean he got a 4.7 out of 5 for ratings i'm not sure if those are ratings from online users or google but you know 4.7 the highest scoring arguably i think man of the match yeah but i don't think i'm gonna outscore him um ex exceptional i mean what a player he is what a young mature player he is to be out on that pitch at the bernabeu at 20 years of age and to be the main man and be the spotlight to get all the spotlight and attention I mean you have to be doing something and yeah he's doing something very very good um, Vinny Jr not far off as well with a 4.6 got a goal um, it was a well taken goal as well um, I think it was Valverde who sent him through rounds past the keeper tight angle but you know good finish he's got a goal like I said you know it's a good game for him Valverde, 2 assists, 4.6 as well. Modric, up there as well. Um, Kamavinga is up there. Um, Rudiger is up there. You know, Tromani, Kepa. And then, yeah, I mean, slightly average performances from Carvajal and Mendy. And Jose Lu. I'm surprised. But, yeah, I mean, he's got a go. But he missed the penalty as well. So maybe that kind of put his rating down. But let's not talk at all about the ratings. Because that's not the most important. Um. Yeah, also sooner. Like, where do we begin? Where do we begin? Because seven shots for them, and one on target. It's gonna be a rough time for them. I mean, look, they are currently tenth, so they're not even that bad. Coming to this game, they won their game previously, and then they lost, drew, and lost. So it wasn't great. They beat Alaves. They lost to Atletico. They drew Sevilla. They lost to Hetafe. They lost to Barcelona. They beat Valencia. They lost to Atletico Club Rival. And they beat Celta Vigo. We all expected this game to be not maybe a very, very hard, tricky game of Real Madrid. I thought it was going to be like a 1-2-0. I don't actually remember what I predicted. But I based it on the fact that against teams like Barcelona and Atletico Madrid they didn't you know perform the level that they did against teams like Valencia and um, Sevilla even so I thought that they were going to lose and I pretty much was certain of that but I thought it might have been you know not that big of a result but for Real Madrid to come away with a 4-0 win yes it might be at home but Osasuna just didn't show anything really going forward and defensively they were awful counter attack brilliant passing 
We could score in any fashion, any way we wanted to. The shots, we had 12 less shots, 8 less on target. You know, they had less shots than Real Madrid had shots on target, like shots in general, right? That 33% of the ball, you know, Real Madrid had twice the amount of passes. You know, the pass accuracy, Real Madrid better. Obviously, more fouls. But that is just massive. I mean, this is a domination. This is a domination. This is a dominated game by Real Madrid. And can we say Real Madrid do not deserve the 4 0? No, we can't. Do Real Madrid deserve it? Yes. You know, Real Madrid do deserve this result. And this 4 0 scoreline. Uh, let's talk about overall. Um, yeah, let's talk about the goals. You know, first goal, Jude Bellingham. I mean, it was a great pass by Modric, not gonna lie. Great vision. Carvajal lays it off to Bellingham on his left foot. He can do basically anything with his right foot, his left foot, his header. You know, he can score in any way possible. He scores a beautiful goal. 1 0 going to the break. You know, a few chances, but I don't think in the first half we were as dominant as we were in the second half. Considering the first half we were still getting into the game, we scored an early goal that, you know, got us an early lead. That was crucial because if we didn't get an early goal, it could have gone into the break nil nil, and Osuna maybe could have gotten themselves a goal, a quick counter goal. We went 1 0 up, you know. And then second half came out the pitch. I think Jose Luis should have scored that opportunity. He just flashed wide of the post. Um, and then Jude Bellingham scored again. Just dribbles to the ball freely, finds Valverde. Valverde just gets a slight touch. And then Bellingham, who is played on side, um, no idea who played him on, but he was played on side. And yeah, I mean. Pass the keeper through his legs actually and make it 2 0. Like I said earlier on, Vinny Jr. counter attack goal 1v1. Rounds past the keeper, it's a tight angle but squeezes it in and then assists Joselu to make it 4. Joselu has a penalty, I think he has to score that. Realistically, it's one of the worst penalties I've seen. I mean, yes, we came out with a win and yes, it didn't really affect us. It would have been nice to get a 5 0 win. It would have been nice for Jose Lu to get two. But that penalty was straight at Herrera. That was straight at the keeper. I mean, if you go on to you know, these ratings on Google, I mean, Herrera is literally the highest performer in terms of the ratings alongside the striker. Yeah, literally, he's arguably joined highest in terms of his ratings. And that tells you a lot because he was. Honestly, atrocious, but he saved the penalty, so he prevented it from being 5 now I guess. But look, this is a positive result because now we're heading into an international break for two weeks. But the problem here is how is the form going to be like with this break? Is it going to be affected? Is it going to remain the same? Who knows, right? But so far this season, we've played really, really well, except for the one odd game away against Atletico. You know, that was a really, really strange game. But where would I kind of rank Real Madrid in terms of, or rate Real Madrid so far for the first 10 games, right? I would say performances-wise, you know, we've done pretty well since the start of the season um, because you know we went through a big patch in August and September where it was not you know looking like we were playing at our best especially August September we started playing better and then we had obviously that dented result against Atletico Madrid but we've started October really really well is it going to be a slight small form of patches or is it going to be proving 
that this team is actually really, really, really good. Now we'll see when we come back against Sevilla in exactly two weeks time actually. We will see, right? But performances wise we've done really really well. In fact, clean sheets wise, we've kept four clean sheets out of I think that's six games, isn't it? Since Union Berlin. And we have basically kept two out of five. So basically for the first part of the season it was two out of five. And then after Union Berlin it was four out of six. So we're definitely doing better defensively since the first few matches. Going forward we're scoring more goals. I mean you're looking at four against Osasuna, three against Napoli, three against Girona, two against Las Palmas, a goal against Atletico, but it doesn't really matter. But before that you're looking at one against Celta Vigo and two against Hetafe and two against also the and three against Almeria. It was not bad, we got away with it, we got the three points, but it was not a good way to really win, if, it, if that makes any sense. Basically, it was not a convincing way to get the game won, basically, and we were not doing it convincingly. So, you know, to get this 4-0 win really, really caps off and really, really proves that ha there has been an improvement since the Atletico Madrid game. I don't know if it's specifically to the Atletico Madrid game. After that game, we were like, let's you know start playing better because clearly after that game, you know, we've got basically what twelve goals in four, basically, right? And we've considered just two in the last four. So record-wise, it's obviously looking good. In terms of the league, we're top, and we will be top regardless of what happened to Barca or Atletico so far you know or any other team because we are top by four points Girona played earlier they beat Cadiz away they got the three points but they're still two points behind of course Barcelona if they beat Granada away if I'm not wrong yep if they do beat Granada away they will be second one point behind you know we've conceded the least amount of goals going in to the international break surprisingly Atletico Madrid and 15th place Las Palmas have considered seven we've considered six so slightly better off Barcelona have considered eight um after the cup nine we're also considered ten Gimon have considered quite a lot actually eleven joined with Rayo Vallecano and Valencia even Sevilla have considered less than them with 10. Um, yeah, 9 games played in the Liga, 8 won, 1 loss, 20 goals scored, the most in the league, I believe. That's if Barcelona can score at least 1. But the goal difference will go in, you know, at the top unless Barcelona can score or win by 4 goals, really. So it's looking good. It's looking good going to the, the break, the international break in La Liga. And the Champions League is still looking good, of course. Two wins from two, looking good. But in the next three games, we have got Sevilla, Braga, and Barcelona away after the international break within a space of a week. So, how are we going to cope with that? Because we've got two La Liga games on the weekend. We got midweek game in the Champions League, and we got Barcelona away, the El Clasico, the biggest game of the season, at the Spotify camp now, away, and these three matches are in the space of a week. How are we going to be able to cope with that? Because when we go, when we head into the Napoli game, I said we had to pick up as many points as we can from Napoli, Osasuna, Sevilla, Braga, and Barcelona. We've done it with two of the games, we've got three left now, we're nearly halfway there. So if we can go away to Sevilla, which isn't easy, get a win. And if we can do that against Braga, which isn't easy, but get a win, we've got Barcelona to worry about. And that's not just it, it's not an easy task of course. But let's hope that we can at least go into that game with some kind of form 
and then after it's looking better because we have got three home games on the bounce Real Vallecano, Braga at home, Valencia at home going to November so we just need to get past this next three matches we've already gotten past two the next three matches get past it you know get hopefully nine from nine in terms of points win three from three and continue from there but it's a good and bad thing for the international break because the players who are not going to for international duty or who are not selected they can get to train and recover of course you know obviously Nacho will still be out for those games so it will be hopefully that Alaba can make it back obviously from Clasico whether he can make it back for Sevilla and Braga I'm not so sure but there's that you know you got players out of the Gula is he going to be finally able to come back and start training a bit more you know for the next two weeks there will definitely be players that will travel but there will be players who will stay you know at Real Madrid during the international break the next two weeks to recover to train it will be a bit of a miss to not watch Real Madrid play for the next two weeks but let's just have a bit of a break you know I think everyone deserves a break you know but these players really and let's see where we can take on from there but right now it's looking good Jude Bellingham is an absolute beast and Real Madrid are heading into La Liga heading to the international break top of La Liga and that's very very impressive but I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video let me know what thoughts are down below hit the button if you did enjoy today's video subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and I'll see you guys in the next one peace